Good morning, everybody again. God bless you. So good to have you here with us. I started to say good to see you, but I can't see you. But uh, you can see me a little bit of a delay, but we're, we're happy to be here. And I just, uh, things have not turned out, obviously. Seems like we're going to go another month. And it's not turned out the way that I would have hoped that it would have, but God is going to see us through. And I just want to come with, with that in mind. God is our protector. He is covering us. We're covered by the blood. And, uh, but I do want to say again how much I miss seeing you and being with you, especially our little slice of the kingdom here of Mascuda First Assembly of God, the folks that uh, of you, we love you, we appreciate you. And uh, we're just really trying to step up our prayers for you that in whatever you're doing and we've been in touch with you. So I know you're doing well, but uh, just miss you. And we've had a little snafu here. So Cynthia's not going to be uh, singing. We're going to get right into the word of the Lord today. And uh, then maybe next week we'll be back on par uh, the way we were normally doing it. But uh, we're so glad uh, having each, each and every one of you here with us. Amen. I'm going to be turning to the book of Philippians. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to chapter 3. And for those that have been in church for a while. It's a familiar passage of scripture that the Apostle Paul gives to us here. And I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, necessarily read it all. But Philippians 3, I'm going to begin my reading at verse 10. And I'm going to read down to and through verse 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 down to and through verse 14. Philippians 3, 10 through 14. I'm going to go ahead. Here's what Paul says, that I may know him. And obviously he's talking about Christ here. And the power of his resurrection, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and that I may know the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead... Not as though, he's saying, I'd already attained, either were already perfect or mature, but I follow after, if that, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. So what he's saying there, the Lord has already apprehended me, now I want to apprehend him. And then he goes on in, um, uh, in verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, uh, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press... And I accentuate that word press. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So this morning, I want to take that word press. And that's simply what I want to talk to us about. Press. Press. You know, when, when, when we get in situations that we're not comfortable with or they're foreign to us and we're, we just don't know how they're going to turn out. There's a couple of ways that we can respond to that in our relationship with God. It may stir us to draw closer to the Lord and it may stir us to press nearer to Him check out our lives, make sure everything is right, or the very opposite of that, it may cause people to become discouraged and they will 
uh, you know, just kind of settle in and uh, they let up on their prayer life, their uh, time in the scripture and, and, and ultimately their relationship with the Lord suffers. So, uh, you know, we have those two ways that we can go. And so that's why that today that I trust that every one of us that we are still pressing. We are still moving forward in the name of the Lord. Now, let me give you an illustration. Several years ago, Cynthia and I were on our way back from a youth camp several miles from the home church and we'd taken several of our teenagers and we didn't have a bus or a van so we had to carpool with several cars. And so we, we had uh, two teenage uh, kids with us, uh, uh, a young lady and a young man. We decided to get off the interstate and get something to eat. As we did so, it was a four lane off the interstate, but uh, several lights that you had to go through, stoplights before we got to the restaurant and we pulled up to one and uh, here was this gal that her car had stalled. Uh, right at the stoplight and of course a lot of people are aggravated blowing their horns but everybody's just trying to whip around her when they could and and nobody seemed to want to help well uh, Bobby Bobby Seville was the young man and by the way uh, Bobby praise God uh, he's pastoring <clears throat> in uh, Pennsylvania now but he and I got out of the car and we pushed this lady out of the intersection and we got her to where she needed to be safe and where she could call uh, for help. But, you know, if you've ever been in that situation and you're trying to push a vehicle, even though it's relatively level ground, I tell you, getting it started is a very difficult thing if it's only two of you doing it. But, you know, after you get it going and uh, you get some momentum going, then it's a little easier. You can let up just a little bit and eventually we got so much momentum that when we got her to where she needed to be she had to put on the brake to be able to stop now we see the same thing in that is that when you initially get past that gut busting muscle straining eye popping trying to get it going you have to press then you can let up a little bit we see this in automobiles or in airplanes taking off or the engines but i was thinking especially about planes you know they rev those engines up for takeoff and and to be able to climb to the altitude they are and then once they're up there they can cut it back and just kind of soar and kind of put it on cruise and and you know you're still good to go I remember several years ago, again, when we were pastoring and a young man in the church had his pilot's license. And he said, Pastor, why don't you come fly with me? And I said, sure, I had the time. I'll, I'll go up with you. Well, I had flown several times commercially in a huge plane. And you know, it's not that big a deal. You're up there so far, you can look out on a clear day, but, but uh, there's no point of reference really of, of any of that. And so this was a four-seater. It was my first time in a small plane. And so, you know, we're taxiing, we're going down the runway, he's starting off and uh, two-seater, you're right there, the engine's just right there in front of you. Man, you could hear that engine humming, it was loud. He climbs up, we climb up to the altitude to where he wanted to be. And I'm looking out the window and I'm a little apprehensive, I'm not afraid, but just kind of looking around and, and seeing what's going on. And all of a sudden, I wasn't paying attention, it sounded like the motor totally quit. 
And I'll be honest, I kind of stiffened up and looked over at him. I thought, oh, dear Lord, we are going down. But he's just continued to talk. And so I thought, hey, and then I could hear the engine still running. But you see, to get us off the ground to the altitude, it was really, the RPMs were really up there. But once we got up there, then he was able to cut it back and uh, just cruise. Now, I think we all understand the physics behind airplanes, automobiles, pushing uh, inertia uh, of physics that something that is in motion is going to continue in motion unless there is opposition from an outside source. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure in a lot of cases that's good in this physical world in which we live in. But here's what I'm saying. We do not want to transfer that law of physics into our spiritual relationship with God. Uh, I don't know about you, but I would say all of us, when we first get saved, I mean, we just go gangbusters for God. I know me, I was so excited. I want to tell everybody about the Lord. I was in service every night that I could be in service and just, uh, you know, Lord, I want to surrender. Here I am. I want to give you. And, and so we start out just doing everything with that enthusiasm, that excitement. I mean, we're pressing. We've got the spiritual RPMs peaked out. We're doing everything we could. Can giving it all of our gusto, all that is within us, all of our heart, we're giving it unto the Lord. But if we're not careful, sometimes in our relationship with the Lord, we all have different seasons we go through. If we're not careful, we kind of let up. And we think, you know, I can kick back. I mean, I've been saved for a long time. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit for a long time. I've been walking with the Lord. So, you know, I can kind of, kind of just put it on cruise and, and stay there. But that's definitely not what the Lord wants us to do. And as Paul says here, he wants us to keep pressing. And that's what it means to move forward, uh, giving it to push, uh, even when we don't feel like pushing, even when we, we don't feel like it. But yet we're, we, we've got to keep our focus and moving forward in the Lord. If there is a cry, a principle that is in the word of the Lord, it is the one that I'm talking about right here. It is one that is expected of by the Lord of us. It is one that the writers in the word of God that they have expounded upon and there's many, as you flip through the Old Testament, New Testament of those believers, that they exemplified it in their everyday life. And that is, is that you don't let up. You keep pressing forward uh, for Almighty God. I know that we use phrases, and I'm afraid sometimes they just become that, a catchphrase, uh, such as, and they're good phrases, but we say, Lord, I want to go higher in my understanding of the things of God. Lord, I want to go deeper in my commitment with you. Lord, I, I want to draw closer more intimate in my relationship with you. And those are noble desires, if they truly are desires that we mean and we're actually doing. But I have to take inventory in my own life. You know, it, it's very easy to get on a plateau in your growth for the Lord. And then you just kind of level out. And sometimes you get in a rut and you don't even realize that, that you're in a rut. <clears throat> And so if we, we mean those things, and that should be our endeavor that the Lord is asking. Sometimes I understand that as we go through difficult times in our life, 
I understand sometimes we're not going to be soaring like the eagle. Sometimes we may not be even running. Other times we may not even be walking. We may be on a crawl on all fours. But you know what? If you are still pressing, if you're still giving it all you've got, for the Lord Jesus Christ and for the kingdom of God, then that's all right. The thing that he wants is us to keep pressing. And that's what the Lord desires. Obviously, you can put it in so many ways, and I, I got to move on to my points, but it's so obvious in the word of the Lord that God does not want us stymied, stalemated, stagnated, permanently situated, but keep moving forward. And, and that's what we see here in the text. The thing that really amazes me is Paul isn't just telling the church there at Philippi. He's not just telling the Philippians that this needs to be your passion. This needs to be your desire. Uh, but he's saying, this is mine also. And for Paul to say that, th this, is, this is mine this is my desire. This is my passion. And when I see that, especially for Paul, let me tell you, Paul is no spiritual slacker. And yet he still felt the need and that desire burning in his heart that he wanted to continue to press even until the resurrection, even until he went to go to be with the Lord. Uh, he he wanted to keep pressing. It's interesting because here in these verses 10 to 14 that I've read today, no less than 10 times does Paul use the personal pronoun of I. 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 And then look at the verbs that he is speaking of. He said, I follow after. I reaching for. Forward, I am pressing forward. So it's very clear. So here, here is what it lets me know that if Paul's no spiritual slacker and he saw the need to keep on pressing, then what does that say about me? What does that say about Rich Goldeyes? And I am no Apostle Paul. And so if he needed to be continuing to press, then I need to continue to press as well. It makes me to know that no matter uh, how high you've gone in the Lord, it doesn't matter how glorious experiences that you've had with God, it doesn't matter how much of the Word of God you know, uh, none of these things in that sense matters. We know that it does, but in, in this context, we cannot rely upon past experiences. We cannot rely upon the laurels of our past, but we've got to keep moving forward with a desire and a passion uh, that we want more of the Lord. Let's, uh, let's take a look here because Paul not only gives us, and, and this is a really wonderful passage of Scripture, but he not only tells us, this is my desire, this is my passion, but he said, let me give you a couple of reasons of why. And this is what I want to focus on, the why. Why? The first thing that I want to notice is that some of these are inferred and then some of the words he's actually bringing it out. But the first one is this. Paul said, I keep on pressing. I don't let up. Even after I get things going pretty good in my relationship with the Lord, I keep pressing. It's because he's saying, I have not fully accomplished. Wow, Paul. I mean, here's the guy that went on several missionary trips. And by the way, Philippians, when it was written, was probably after a lot of these trips. Certainly, Timothy comes after. 
But so Paul is talking about he's already gone on missionary trips. He has uh, led countless multitudes to the Lord. He pastored some of these churches for a little while and then he moved on and set other individuals to pastor but then uh, he was the authority figure the mentor he wrote letters to them and not only did he write those letters under the unction of the Holy Spirit and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, but those letters now are the Word of God. And, and we look at that, we see that, that Paul, all of the achievements, all of, of his accomplishments, and yet here this guy is saying that, I, I can't let up because there's so much more to be done. I'm reminded of what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10. He said to the 70 that he was sending out, he said, truly the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of harvest will send uh, laborers. And so that, that word great there, the harvest is great, it means many, it means huge, large. So Jesus is saying that, that no matter what we accomplish, and, and let me say this, that after 2,000 years, the harvest is still as great, if not greater than it's ever been. And so there's not a, this is not the time to let up. This is the time to push forward, full throttle, pedal to the metal, a gung-ho for God, because there's so much to be done. You see, not only in reaching those that do not have a personal relationship with Christ, but, but Jesus ministered to the entire person. And even people like Paul, that after they were saved, uh, Paul saying, as long as there's people that are hurting, as long as there's people that needs prayer, as long as there's people in need, as long as there's individuals and there's many of them, and uh, then, you know, the time frame involved as well, because one uh, great man of God in the past, he put it this way. He said, we are dying or I am a dying man preaching to dying men. So what he's saying is, I don't know if I have tomorrow. And then the people that we're trying to encourage and reach, we don't know if they have tomorrow. So time is of the essence. And the jo job is almost overwhelming. So do you think that now is the time to let up because we're going through something we've never gone through? No. Now is the time to keep on pressing up for the Lord. Somebody said it this way, and I like it. They said, the measure of success is not what you've already accomplished. It's not measured by what you've already accomplished, but it's measured by what needs to be accomplished yet. So it's not what we've done, but what remains to be done. Let me tell you, folks, we have not worked ourselves out of a job. There's still much to be done. And Paul said, I'm going to keep on pressing. I, I want to give it the best I can. There's so much that you could say here. I, I, I know that God has purposes for each and every one of us. According to Romans 8, 28, he calls us according to that purpose. He equips us for that purpose. And, and I, I'm one that takes that seriously. I wake up in the morning and I say, God, I want to fulfill your purpose for me today. There's an old song that I, I, I don't even know the words to, but there's a phrase that uh, years ago when I heard it left an impression upon me. And I, I pray this way. Don't let me leave behind whenever I go. Don't let me leave behind an unfinished task. 
Lord, that I, I, I want to accomplish today. You have a plan for me. And so I want to be diligent about that. I, I want to come to the end of the day and, and you can say, well done. Yes. Not only when we stand before the Lord and we know as Christians, we're all going to stand before the beam of judgment and God's going to evaluate our works, uh, what we've done. And then, like he said to those that he gave the talent that multiplied, doubled them, he said, well done. He didn't say well considered or well thought out or well planned. We can sit around and plan and talk about it. But what we need to do is get out there and do and do where he can say, well done. I, I even think about this service here today, as odd as it may be from what we've done in the past. But I know God God has a plan. God has a purpose. And Lord, I don't want to come to the end of this message or this service and, and I've missed you or I didn't fulfill something. Uh, listen, church, now's not the time to set our spiritual lives on, on cruise. Now is the time more than ever. I believe Jesus is coming soon. And what soon means, I do not know. But but I do know that now is not the time to let up and take it easy. We may have some momentum going. Let's not lose that momentum. I got to hurry. Paul said, the reason that I'm not quitting, the reason I'm pressing is not only have I not achieved, but he said, I have not apprehended. We see that there in in the text and I kind of accentuated that when I was when I was reading in verse 12 not as though I've already attained or then he goes on and he said uh, apprehended that I not as though I'm already perfect but I follow after this is what I'm pressing towards that I may apprehend he says that or him for which also I've been apprehended the word apprehended it, it means to to know but literally it, it speaks of grasping you know we we use grasp in that sense that you know I, I'm having a hard time grasping this I, I, I can't get a hold of it or okay I finally got a grasp on this I finally understand and that's kind of the way it's used here because back in verse 10, he said that I may know him. And, and the word know here is used in the Old Testament sense where it speaks of the most intimate, closest communion that two people can have. And so he's saying, Lord, I, I want to know you. I, uh, yeah, I know you, but I want to know you more. I want to get a greater grasp upon you. And, and that's what he's talking about. He said, Lord, you grasp me now, I want to grasp you. What does he mean that he was apprehended by the Lord? Well, he was apprehended initially by the Lord on the road to Damascus. You know, he's persecuting the church. And he's out there and the Lord spoke to him and, and this blinding light. And he was blind for three days. And, and uh, yet then this voice, the Lord spoke to him and say, why, why persecutest me? Saul and and uh, you know why are you kicking against the pricks and and we know that Ananias was sent to him after three days and and and, and we know that there he was gloriously saved. Can I tell you, Paul was going on about the business that he thought he needed to do, persecuting the church, but the Lord grabbed him, Hallelujah, and arrested him and apprehended him and turned his life around and now what he's saying Lord you have done such wonderful things to me and, and you've apprehended me in the spiritual sense now now I in spiritual relationship I want to apprehend you I want to grasp you I want to know more about you I, I, I want to go truly deeper higher closer I want to know you
And, and the word know here and apprehend, it's not just on a surface level. It's not talking about knowing facts about Christ. But it's talking about experiential knowledge. I want to experience you, Lord, on a personal level. More and more and more and more every day. You know, there, there's individuals that, and we hear them, you know, the Bible says that professing themselves wise, they become fools. And there's, there's a lot of people out there that they could go through the history and the historical events of Christ. And they could uh, do it chronologically and not miss a beat. Uh, many of them are able to quote the words of Christ at length. Many of them can talk to you about the miracles and and. and church history and, and all of these things and have a knowledge about it, but they don't truly know him. They know about him, but they do not truly know him. And that's what Paul was saying here. I want to know you, Lord. I want to, I want to know you. I, I want to, I want to know more about you, Jesus. I, I, I want to know more about the authority and the mystery of your person, of who you are. I, I, I want to know more about your supernatural power. I want to know more about this glorious salvation that I have experienced. I want to know more about the benefits that come with this salvation. I want to know more, Lord, about your love and mercy and grace. Yes, I've experienced it day after day for 47 years now. But Lord, I, there's still such much more that I want to come in close communion, in intimate close communion. And I want to know more about you. I want to know what pleases you, Lord. I want to know what grieves the Holy Spirit. I, I want to know. I can go on on and on and on but the passion of my heart today is oh God it's no time to let up because I not like Paul in the sense as great as him but, but that passion that he has I have not achieved I have not completely apprehended and we never will so now is not the time to let up Now's the time to move forward. I want to ask all of us today, is that really the total focus of your life? To know him in a greater way? Is, is that, if it is, is that evidence to everybody that, around, that is around us that that is our passion, that is our desire, that is our pursuit, that is what we're pressing for? Is it evident to, evident to them or are there other things that's more evident that we have a greater passion for? I got I to gotta close. I've, I've been going about a half an hour here, but... There's one more thing. Paul said, I, I keep pressing. And that's just one word, what we're talking about. I keep pushing forward. I've not arrived. And that's really something to say. I've not apprehended. You know, you think about what Paul had experienced on the road to Damascus. And then after he was saved, he didn't go into Jerusalem for three years. He was on the backside of the desert communing personally with the Holy Spirit and Christ learning. And then he was caught up into the third heaven and, and he could not even explain or speak the words that he heard. I tell you what, Paul had some pretty wonderful experience, but he said, I've still not, I, I, I've, I, I, I've still not apprehended. But the last thing here is I've not arrived. I've not achieved, I've not apprehended, and I've not arrived. The two quick points on that. I've not arrived. The first one is maturity. Maturity level. I've not arrived 
in my spiritual maturity. He, he says there, and I, I mentioned there, he said, as if, as if I am already perfect in verse 12. Perfect doesn't mean sinless perfection, but it means mature in your relationship with the Lord. You're no longer a babe in Christ. You're still growing, but you're becoming more mature every day in your relationship with Him. And Paul said, I, I, I've not reached that level. I've not arrived at the fullness of the level. I, I'm amazed. Paul said in Ephesians, he's talking about the fivefold ministry and what that fivefold ministry, the purpose of them and how God has called them and the various things within the body of Christ that, that he has purposed for them to do. But in Ephesians 4 and 13, one of the things he says, he said, until we, we all measure up to the stature of Christ or the fullness of Christ. You know what? I, I, I may measure myself with somebody else and feel pretty good about myself. I may measure myself with somebody else and feel pretty bad about myself. But usually we measure ourselves against people that we know that we're going to stand above them in the maturity level. And then we say, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. But we don't measure ourselves amongst each other. We measure ourselves to the stature of Christ. And when you do that, where do I really stack up? After 47 years, how do I measure up to the fullness of Christ? We've got to keep pressing, church. We've got to keep pressing in our maturity level. Paul said, I've not arrived. And look at Paul. But not only, I've not only arrived, not only in the maturity aspect of it, but a marathon. He's talking about a race. And what's so interesting to me is that in verse 13 he said, And reaching forth unto those things which are before. <clears throat> if you've ever watched a marathon or sprints or short distances and it's close and two people are very close as they approach the finish line, you know how that they'll put their arms back and their chest out because they want to they wanna be the first. They want to be the first to break the tape. And so I'm reaching forth. I'm reaching forth. And what it is, it's that last burst of effort. To, if there's an ounce of energy left in you, now's the time to give it, Paul was saying, because there's the finish line. Folks, we've not finished yet. We're still alive today. The Lord has not seen fit to call us home. And so that means there's still a purpose. We've, we've not come to the finish line yet. And so therefore, we've got to keep reaching forward. That Lord, I, I, I've not arrived. I'm not home yet. And that's why that I've got to keep pressing. I hope today that all of us that, you know, it, it, it's easy to become a little lethargic when you have to be home. And if you're not working your job or you're not out, it, it's, it's easy to become lethargic. But spiritually, church, I'm telling us this is not the time. Let's don't put our spiritual lives on cruise and say, I'm just going to make it through that. But let's keep pressing. And so today, I trust that you accept this challenge. I know that I've been burdened in my own heart. I, I know the Lord's been dealing with me about some things. And so I, I trust that you have been challenged, maybe even convicted like I have been. And so let's keep pressing and let's keep believing the Lord 
There's still people that's hurting out there. There's still people that needs the Lord. There's still Christians that needs edified and encouraged and uplifted and interceded for and prayed for. And, and no, we can't wrap our arms of love around them and let them know that we're there, but, but in all ways that we can. So church, let's, let's keep pressing. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I, I feel in the depths of my soul a stirring. I just ask, oh God, that you would help each and every one of us. And Lord, now's not the time to put on cruise. Now's not the time to kick back and put our feet up and regardless of what we've accomplished to rest on our laurels, regardless of what we've already experienced and seen God do in our own personal lives, now's not the time to live off of the past. Lord, we've not arrived yet. I, I truly wonder after 47 years, how do I stack up compared to you, Jesus? I know I don't have a lot of years. I know that there's more years behind me than that is ahead of me. Lord, I don't want to leave behind an unfinished task. Lord, my tenure here is the pastor of this church. Only you know. But I don't want to leave behind an unfinished task. So God, speak to us. Stir us to keep on pressing. Keep on reaching forward. Keep on following after with an excitement, with an enthusiasm, with an effort, with an energy, with a power of God that can only allow us to do it. So Lord, work it in our hearts and work it in our lives. And Jesus, we're going to give you the praise and we're going to give you the glory for it. So anyone else that maybe even happens across this message, stir us in our hearts. If somebody doesn't know you, Lord, as their personal Savior, let them call out, truly repent, be sorry for their sins, ask you to forgive them. Or get a hold of somebody that can pray with them over the phone or however, Lord. I just pray that you'll heal, that you'll cover, that you'll keep from. God, all types of situations going on, we are your children. As you covered the children of Israel in Goshen, although they were just side by side by the ten plagues, yet not one of them was able to touch the people of God. And so, Lord, even though we rub shoulders with and even though unknowingly we're in close contact with, possibly, God, you still are our protection. Lord, hear me. So we want to know you greater as our protector, as our deliverer. Meet every need, and I know that you will, and I praise you for it. We give you the glory for it in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you how much I love you and how much we're praying in this here that Cynthia is singing. Let's just, if you're listening right now, sing it. And you know this, this old song, this old chorus. I want more of you, Lord. Of things I've had my fill. And yet I hunger still. Empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. Sing it again. Lord, 
Lord, I need is that more our of you. Is that your passion? Is Lord, that your so heartbeat? Much more of you. Gotta have more of you, Lord. I've not achieved. I've not I've apprehended. I've not all, arrived. But what I, I, I know I'm not measured Lord, up to the fullness. I'm, I'm not perfect morally. I'm not perfect all even maturely. I've had and maturity. God, we've not come to the end of this marathon that we've been running for the Lord. So we got to keep running. Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. One more time. I need more. I need more of you. So much more of you. But what, what I, I need, need, Lord, it's more of you. Listen, of things I've had my fill. Of things I've had my fill. And yet I hunger still. Empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. That's your passion. Go forward today in the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to achieve more. I'm going to know you more. And Lord, I'm, I'm keeping pressing, knowing, and striving because I've not arrived. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day in the Lord. Stay encouraged. We're the victors. Amen. God bless.